Hey everyone, Tony D with a final hot take. Uh, you gotta see this video. There's another critical race theory. You could actually see the class being taught by this very heavy set black woman who's wearing like a skin tight outfit for some reason. Doesn't do her any good, believe me. Uh, and uh, she's basically saying all white people are racist. You're born racist. There's nothing you can do about it. You'll never, you'll never stop being racist. You're, you're like demons. I mean, yeah, it's out there. And I believe her entire audience is white, uh, mostly women, I think. I don't think I saw any other races in the audience. And they just sit there and listen to her. I don't know why. I don't know how you could sit there and listen to a woman lecture you and tell you that you're awful. And meanwhile, she still has her uh, uh, you know, her Twitter up and her, her, her PayPal or whatever, you know, she's soliciting from donations to these people. And I have no doubt that some of these people are, feel guilty enough to give her money. I mean, that's how crazy it is. Um, there was a woman, I don't know if you saw it, in, I believe it was in Rochester, New York. She was sitting in a restaurant and the Black Lives Matter people are screaming at her and they totally interrupt her meal. She came out with a statement. She wouldn't raise her fist, right? And good for her. She wouldn't raise her fist in solidarity with the uh, rioters, really. And uh, they screamed at her and they argued. And uh, she, put, she put out an op-ed saying why she didn't raise her fist, but then went on to say, oh, but I support the Black Lives Matter movement. And she actually marched with these people, the people who just showed up and started screaming at her. And she even says in the article, like, I didn't know why they were there. They were just screaming. So how can you support a movement that's so chaotic and stupid and idiotic? Why would you support that movement? It makes no sense. Like, you know, if you support, let's say you support the local mayor's race and his support, supporters go running out in the street, smashing things up in, in, a, in just a bout of chaos. And you really are supportive of, of the mayor. You're going to say, well, you know, uh, I still support the mayor, but those guys, I mean, you, you'd be like, well, why doesn't the mayor come out and say something? You have to hold the BLM leadership into account for the actions of its supposed members. But they don't, they play this game. Well, you know, they're not our members or we don't know who they are or, or whatever. They don't say anything, really. It's because this is part of the game. The, and part of the game is to radicalize, polarize, tear down the state and rebuild it in their own wacky Marxist image. And that's part of critical race theory, too, because the only solution to anything for these people is communism. Uh, and if you tear down everything, yeah, we'll all be equal. We'll all be equally poor. We'll all be equally vulnerable. We'll all be equally trying to kill each other, most likely over to the last scraps of food. And we'll all be equally oppressed by whoever managed to get the guns first. So, you know, these people are, in my view, deeply, deeply ignorant. They, they've been coddled throughout their entire academic careers and... They've been allowed to continue with this nonsense, just like gender studies, um, because no one's going to stop them. No one wants to, no one in the administrations of these colleges wants to stop the money flowing in for these people to earn degrees. And they don't want them to, like if they fail their classes and they're hard, well, that's not a good customer, right? That's not, that doesn't make for a happy customer. I got to pay more money. I got to go to another class. Well, that seems unfair. Oh, well, what? I graduated. Every one of my wacky theories is validated. Oh, I love this college. Yeah, that's, that's what it's all about. These professors have coddled these idiots, just like helicopter parents, right? That's how you get these protesters. They're, they're coddled as little kids. They act terrible. The parents don't correct them. In fact, they reward them. They give them candy to shut them up. You know, it's like me and little Joan, and uh, my dog. And I, I sometimes coddle her and I'll just give her a treat to shut her up because she won't stop barking. Um, that's bad. 
That's not good discipline. <laughs> it's not the way to discipline your dog, by the way. But sometimes I do it. But she's a dog and she's very tiny and I could just, I don't know, lift her up, put her in a box somewhere and I could uh, not have to worry about her. I don't put her in a box, by the way. Anyhow, uh, this, these people have been coddled, you know, and then you got people in the New York Times, right? Same sort of thing. They, their careers have been coddled because places like the New York Times, in my view, they hire people based on these immutable, immutable characteristics. Oh, we need more women. We need more people of color or uh, this kind of person or that kind of person rather than by merit. You know, rather than having a dog-eat-dog -dog world of reporters and, you know, getting the best stuff. And now that's not the only factor. The other factor is the internet. The internet has ruined places like the New York Times because they never really understood it. And by the time they started to understand it, now they're doing things that, well, sort of clickbait places do, right? They're just desperate for clicks now because their whole entire system their whole entire business model has crumbled around them and they had to find a new one fast to keep the money up. And the only one that compares is a system where they get millions and millions of clicks. And the only way to get millions and millions of clicks every day is to be hyperbolic and sensational and crazy. And that's what they do, uh, in my view. So you have people who do the 1619 Project. Another example of something totally insane, completely insane, but it's packaged as this academic thing. You know, the idea that the United States really was a slaveocracy and everything about it was white supremacy. It's just nuts. It's not supported by history or science or anything. And critical race theory, and you'll see it in this class. You can see the video by going to We Are Change and um, on YouTube. And you'll see, you know, she just comes right out and says it. Comes right out and says it. White people, are, you're all racist and there's nothing you can do about it. You can work on yourselves, but you have to work on yourself forever. What does that sound like to you? It sounds like slavery to me. It sounds like intellectual slavery. Because it wouldn't even matter if you came in and said, well, you know, I really, I really, really yeah, did some work today. You know, I, I think I really, I think I really get it. No, you don't get it. You're still racist. I mean, that's just stupid on its face. That, 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 that'll just drive any ally out. Because after a few times of that, you're just going to throw up your hands and go, well, you know what? I'm done. I'm done with this. I, you want to call me a racist? Fine. You just walk away. That's what's going to happen. And maybe that's the plan. Maybe that's the plan to just get people out who, who don't conform to their Marxist ideology. I wouldn't put it past them, but ultimately it's a it's a poor strategy because as we've seen over and over again, the left eats itself. And after a while, it won't be enough that they got rid of all the white people. They're going to have to get rid of other people in other groups. They're going to have to get, I mean, there are articles that come out about the skin, tele, skin tone of uh, people uh, who are brown and that you know, and these these are these aren't my opinions. These are the articles' opinions about you know there aren't enough people of darker skin color in jobs. There aren't enough people of color who are gay and trans in jobs. So it won't be enough after a while. They'll just keep going and animizing these groups until nothing. Until you'll be hunting down for a you know trans, a gay, trans person of color with a disability and all these other traits and you'll find one and just hire them based on just that. That's what it's headed towards. Uh, right now, it's, it's still pretty bad. I mean, the fact that they're pushing the 1619 Project. But Trump has, of course, come out against it. He named it specifically and said, yeah, no, we're not going to have this stuff taught anymore. So at least it's out of government uh, for the most part. Uh, but these people are ruthless. They're zealots. They're possessed by this ideology of Marxism, of critical race theory, of, um, you know, 
fourth wave feminism, intersectionality. I mean, all this stuff pretty much overlaps. If you made a Venn diagram, it would almost be a circle, really. There'd be very few people on the outside. It's just all... And, uh, and those people, even on the fringes, they're going to go away, too. They'll be driven out of whatever movements they are. Um, you know, I have no doubt that BLM and Antifa would eventually burn itself out. I mean, it just would. But we need law enforcement to at least protect what we have while it burns out. Because they're not going to win, but they're going to do a ton of damage on the way. And mostly, you know, the damage is being done in Democrat-controlled areas. And uh, this ideology is driving it. That's why you got, I just did that, you know, talked about the 20-year-old college student. She's from a rich family. You know, she's running around smashing windows with Antifa. She's in black block. Oh, I'm so wonderful and woke. Look at me, mom and dad. You don't understand. You're racist and I'm racist and everybody's racist. But you should start working on yourself. I mean, it's an, it's, it's, it's a, it's an ideology. It's, it's basically ideological suicide. Uh, you know, it, it's just a, a, a way to completely demonize, ironically, uh, a group of people. And, uh, you know, I'm against it. I'm a, I'm against it. Uh, it's just, it's just nonsense. Um, and I can't believe, you know, this is, we've gotten to this point. You know, when I went to college, there was still some amount of college there. You know, there's still some moments where I felt kind of stupid that I didn't know more. You know, now I look at college and I go, my God, what a waste of money that must be for some of these people. Yeah, uh, There was a time when I was thinking about going back to college to teach. And I thought, whoa, that might be good. And I started looking into it. And let me tell you something. It, it's bad. It's bad. What I looked into and what I saw, I just like walked. I said, no way am I doing this. And, uh, you know, and their, their response, uh, the one woman asked me, well, are you published? And I started rattling off all my credits. And she went, Wow. And I'm like, well, if you're impressed with my credits and I'm trying to get a job from you, why am I talking to you? Like, you're impressed with my credits. I'm the one who needs money. I'm the one who's broke looking for a steady paycheck. And you're going, wow. <laughs> it's like, you, you should have way more credits than me, lady. Everybody in your department should have credits out the wazoo. Yeah, you shouldn't be going wow to a guy like me, but there was, and I was just like, at that moment, I knew I I can't I can't be this. It's it's too late for me to go to, go to go back to college and be a f professor. If I had started like maybe twenty years ago, I would have had a shot at it. But you know, you got to really put in your time in these places. And now the tenured, you know, jobs are really tough, and they've got all these adjunct professors and plus I'm not woke and uh, they'll pretty much figure that out if they watch this channel anyhow that's it for tonight we'll see you tomorrow oh smash like and subscribe you know push the videos around uh, social media stuff like that help me out here